Good morning, folks. This is David at Custom Sling. Yeah, we in here Saturday morning uh, making some slings. Got an order for 100 3-8 by 5 foot uh, chokers. And uh, we are doing uh, Flemish dies in these. We're actually braiding it back onto itself and putting a sleeve on it. Cold morning. It was 19 degrees when I woke up. And uh, we kept it warm in the shop, though. In fact, I'm sweating a little bit. So anyway, here's how we do it. We'll do a standard die, which is seven lay. The reason why I'm looking at these tails, I pick up bottom right left. That uh, makes the tails the uh, correct length. Uh, and you can adjust it a little bit. But anyway, here we go. We're going to pick up three strands on the bottom. We'll open it up seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's eight. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You just cross it over. Pull it up like that. Now here's what I don't like about wire co rope. They put that little old ribbon in there. And it's aggravating. It slows me down. But it's a marker strand for them. It lets them know whose wire it is. Now, I pull that sleeve up and then don't jam it up like that. You just want it where it touches. And I usually hold my tails lightly right there. And I like them about the end of the sleeve, somewhere in that area. And you can, you can do this or that makes the tails longer. That makes them shorter. See there, I do it that way, makes them longer. I like them about the end on these. And you won't do it where your eyes are kind of flat. Sometimes it'll vary on you. So wrap that in just like that. The other side. This side's got three strands in the core in it. Now I always like to flip mine. You don't have to, but I do because I can see my tails better. I'm going to take all three of these and lay them around. And you want to make sure that they're laying properly there. And then I take these. And I split it just like that. One strand core and the two outer strands. And then we go around with them like that. Pull the sleeve up. And tap them up a little bit. And I always look in there and see if I can see my tails right at the taper of the sleeve right there. I always like to double check it. Now, with that being said, I had a guy make a comment on one of my other videos on uh, inch and three quarter and he said that guy there with the flashlight looking in that sleeve to see if the tails are up he said i wouldn't buy uh, a, a sling from a company like that if he's looking inside that sleeve with a flashlight to see if his uh, sleeve is up on the tails all the way and i thought to myself <laughs> i would rather make sure the sleeve is all the way up because sometimes that wire can catch a dig into the sleeve inside there and, and not all the way up. Well, you look in there and you can see the tails at the taper there. It's where it's supposed to be. Uh, sometimes you can't see in there. So a lot of times what we'll do, we'll take a small wire and we'll stick it in there and check it where it bottoms out and bend it. And then we can lay it on top and see where they are in this area here. So, anyway, I wouldn't buy a sling from a, a company that don't check their tails and sleeves to make sure they're all the way up. We don't want a failure, so I'd rather take the time to check. But anyway, and I always mark it here and there because when it goes to the press, if a guy's sitting there pressing it and he sees that mark way up here, he knows, hey, that sleeve done slipped down. And he'll go over and tap it back up. So, we do a lot of checking. I took your advice. I put an overhead camera up. I don't know if it's uh, going to show you what you need to see, but we're trying. Uh, never thought this stuff would take off like it did. And didn't realize people would be so interested in it. So, I'm trying to do better. So, anyway. So, this end's done. Now, flip it over. And... That end down there, I'll turn it up to about a 45 like that. 
and then I will check back here to see if I have that bottom right left in which I do there's one on the bottom right left so I'm gonna pick that up and open it Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I knew I was going to do it. You got to put your tag on. Check and see if it's at the end of the sleeve. Yep, that's where I want it. You'll notice my eye's flat. That eye down there is still at about a 45 degree angle. And it could be a little more, a little less, is whatever's working. All three of these around. Take these around. And pull that sleeve up. Now, man, there's one of them more red strands that I don't like. Mark it. I'm going to look at it again to make sure the tails are up. We don't want to sleep halfway on. All right. The reason why I turn that at a 45 degree angle is because when you press it, um, it's, it's the sling is laying like this. And when you press it, it rolls like this. And my slings come out flat. I see other people putting slings on their websites and pictures and stuff like that. The slings are all jacked up. The, the, the eyes are right angle or at a 45. Some people might say, well, maybe they wanted them at right angles. Maybe. Doubt it. They're just not very good at making slings. The company's probably good at it. It's just that person that made that one wasn't. And it does happen sometimes. Sometimes these uh, slings will roll more than you think or might not roll as much. So usually that that does it but i'll press the first one and be kind of looking at it sometimes i'll put a little twist in it while i'm pressing it which will flatten it out uh so you can tweak them a little bit but anyway there's that one. and there's the finished one there now i'm not going to go as slow on this one Cut. <laughs> All right, we're going to do this one here, and I'm going to go a little faster on this one. I think I'm going to go a little faster on it. I'd rather do a half inch or a five eighths any day than a three eighths or a quarter. Some people think the smaller they are, the easier they are. There's a, a sweet spot, and I like half, five eighths, and three quarters. That's, that's the sweet spot for me. Sometimes I'll chop it in there, because, like I said, sometimes the strands ain't laying down just right, you can catch. Mark there, there. Flip it over. I don't do these every day like I used to, so I'm fumbling just a little bit. I'm an office guy now. But after I get done with a hundred of these, I'll be whipping them out. Plus I'm talking, I can't talk and do this at the same time. So 
somebody told me I need to make a slide hammer with nylon inserts in it. That's a good idea. But this right here, the way we're doing it, has worked since 1971. So I don't see no need in doing that. That little piece of metal there I'm hammering with, the edges of it's gotten a little bit rolled and uh, slips off these little ones a little bit, but that ain't something that can't be fixed. I said the little red strands, ribbons slow me down, that's why I don't like them. You don't want to keep banging on because what can happen, you can drive them tail right where I got it. They're coming out perfect. Now this end here, I'm going to slow it down again a little bit for you because a lot of you, I'm sure, will tell me. But I usually put it in the vise, and I'm guessing where I'm putting them in the vise. If you do them every day, I mean, it's just natural where to put them. So... But anyway, I usually go up about eight lays in the vise is what I usually do. Open it up like I said, seven. And I usually will spin them. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There you go. Don't forget your tag. Back in the day, when I learned to do these, we didn't have to put tags on. And then we started using these, like everybody else, these junk orange plastic tags that were constantly coming off. And uh, there's some people out there that still use them, uh, but they don't stay on. So we use these real thick. These are aluminum here. On the chain slings, we use stainless steel. But I think I told you I was going to slow that down. I don't think I did. I got talking to you. I'm going to check it. I don't like the way that looks. I'm going to look just a little more. There we go. We will not put out a bad sling, I can assure you of that. And never have. Knock on wood. Okay, <laughs> let me slow it down for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Core and three strands on the right, three strands on the left. Cross this one under the left, just like that. Hold it right there, just wherever's comfortable. Bring it around, come underneath, and pull it up. Now, a seven lay eye, standard eye, will always marry up right here in the back. It marries on the side, uh, the tail's going to be too long. Ain't going to work. Bring it around. Bring it around. I like to pull it out a little bit, especially if there's a ribbon in there. There you go. See there? It's about normal. And I'm really trying to stay out of the camera lens where y'all can see this. All right. Just the way those naturally lay there. If you get it right up in here and go around, they all will lay right for you. Now you get on bigger slings, wires are stiffer, they'll pop back on you. And that one right there, I go to over here to the left and the core in, in this one, the last one that wraps around. And I take all three of them and go around. I always hold my thumb or my finger, just whatever's going on at the time. 
and I always like to twist my sleeve when I'm going on with it. Just helps it. Oh, I forgot my tag here for a minute. That goes on the other end. Check it, mark it, and then turn it. You don't want it too far out of the vise. If you do, when you, on especially on bigger stuff, when you're putting your tails up, if that was, you know, the sleeve was way out here, it'd be just like this when you're trying to pull it up, and it just, it just doesn't work very well that way, for me anyway. about the way these look. 
actually that switch is kicking out on this one. You just barely hear it. <clears throat> person doing this they won't they'll have this wire like pulled sideways a little bit and they'll come down they'll crush the cable back here so you want to make sure it's in the dive common sense you know what i mean but this day and time there's a lot of people that not using very good common sense anyway that's what's involved with that take every one of them and we'll wipe the sleeve down. We'll look around and make sure we don't see no cracks. And also, when you put your hands on them, you know there's no cracks. All right, and I'll show you another little trick you need to do. All right, that looks good. Now, we're going to make sure the dies wasn't wore out by checking the diameter of the sleeve. I'm going to mic these out with a pair of micrometers. Yep. 0.75. That's what we want. Yep. put a green stripe a green stripe around every one of them that says that we actually we actually did look at it you buy a new forklift like we got a Toyota forklift and uh, every bolt on that thing's got a and fitting's got a pink mark on it and that's what it do you just you know you've actually looked around this sleeve and if they're laying in the floor, you know, you inspected them. Also, <clears throat> we put these warning tags on them. Do's and don'ts, stuff like that. You wouldn't believe the stupid things people do. And you wouldn't believe how many people you'll hand these uh, warning sheets to. They'll rip them off and throw them down on the ground. I don't never read them. And it's like, you really are to read one or two every now and then. And some of them ain't, I know ain't never read one. A lot of people think they know everything, but you never know everything. You learn every day. Heck, I still learn every day about this stuff. And I always like to put these warning tags down here on the uh, tag end. Now you see how much time goes into each sling, and, and I'm sure this uh, video will be edited a little bit, but you see what goes into it. It ain't no automated system. It's hands-on. These slings here, 3 eighths by 5 foot. The vertical capacity is 1.4 ton. The choke is 1.1 ton. Basket's 2.9 ton. We also, on these tags, it's got our company name. It's got the date that we done it. And it's also got a, uh, uh, not necessarily a serial number, but it's got an order number because these right here don't have to be tested. Uh, but we put an order number on there so if anybody uh, brings these back uh, or has a complaint on one, which don't happen, uh, I know which uh, sales order and I even know who bought it. So anyway, that's all I got for you today. Chuck, he's just dying for me to quit this video where he can finish testing all these chains he's got to finish. He got about, what, 20 more? 26. 26 more chains to test. He'll knock them out pretty fast. And then I got to get my butt busy and get these slings done. I've been fooling around with this camera, and I done got behind. But I know it was important to get this out there because y'all been wanting to see it. And I can't wait to see how that overhead shot uh, worked out. I don't know. Could have been too high. I, I'm not sure yet, but we'll find out. So don't uh, beat me up too bad if it ain't perfect. Because I ain't perfect and neither are none of y'all. So <laughs> just the way it is. Anyway, thanks for watching. 
and subscribe and hit that like button. It helps me out. I'm working on my, what do you call it? Mon I'm getting monetized, so to speak. It's in review process right now. Everything else is checked out. So maybe they can start sending me about $8 a month for doing this. That's about all I'll probably get if that. Anyway, thanks. Well, all 100 slings are made. Time to get them to the customer.